Artix Linux doesn't use systemd. That's it, that's the claim to fame. It's an Arch-based distro, and in many ways, it's very similar to Manjaro. Just like Manjaro, it consumes the upstream Arch repositories and modifies them to fit the goals of the distro. And in Artix's case, they strip out systemd and either modify or remove software that depends on it. It's also one of those 64-bit only distros, though you can enable 32-bit support, but that means enabling the Arch multi-lib repos. Since Artix ships with only 64-bit support, we're going to be avoiding the 32-bit stuff in this episode. We're going to be looking at the Mate edition of Artix because the Mate desktop is pretty cool and it doesn't get a lot of love on the show. And instead of systemd, we'll be using runit, or runit, which has absolutely no impact on this review at all. So the install was performed by the unremarkable Calamares installer, and it did the job just fine. The install and desktop is pretty lightweight, weighing in at 3.7 gigabytes and 390 gigabytes respectively. In NeoFetch, we can see that this is Artix Linux, with the Artix flavor of the Linux kernel 5.5.2. This is the Mate desktop with Marco as the window manager and a custom theme and icons from Fayenza? And since we're already in the terminal, Artix doesn't have any UI-based package management tools by default, we may as well run an update. And there's like three gigabytes of updates, so that's fun. And even more fun, the update failed. Now that's because Pac-Man tends to not move, delete, or otherwise overwrite existing files. So in this case, p11kit.trust so already exists for some reason. So Pac-Man just kind of bails out and leaves the whole thing hanging. It's not really that big of a deal if you're used to Arch, but it's not terribly impressive that the very first update for this distro basically dumps out. For funsies, I installed Pamac just to see if it handled these sorts of conflicts different. Spoiler alert, it doesn't. But anyways, the Artix Mate flavored desktop actually looks pretty nice. It uses different window decorations for GTK2 and GTK3 apps, which is a little bit ghetto, but the overall theme is decent. The notification area of the panel looks like butt, though. The clock has this little font, and the icons beside it are huge. The red shield is from Pamac, which doesn't come with Artix, but that weird internet icon and the floppy disk icon are part of the default desktop, and I hate them. There's also no printer or Bluetooth widgets, let alone support for them, like, there's no out-of-the-box support for either of these, but whatever, it'll make the review shorter. Mate in general has little to no bells or whistles, so there's not really a whole lot to say about the desktop. There are a few other themes included, but I like the default Artix theme the best. Lots of backgrounds are on offer, but most of them are just default to Mate, and the fonts are Roboto, which is, in my opinion, a better choice over Noto, which a lot of distros tend to ship with. The default launcher in the panel doesn't even have a search, so you'll be pecking and hunting through the app list like a caveman. The default app selection was pretty decent though, I didn't really find any duplicates, and the overall install size was tiny. So networking, let's talk about that really quick. Samba network discovery simply didn't work at all. I couldn't even SMB into another computer, pretty sure that's the first on the show. SSH and FTP connections work just fine though, that's really all there is to say. And for the media stuff, EXFAT supported is included by default, which is a little bit odd, because 7-zip is not, and neither is RAR. And the Targi Z archive took ages to open, it almost extracted the regular zip file faster than it even opened the Targi Z file. Crazy. Codex support was really weird. The media player is MPV, which is normally a great choice, but it somehow couldn't play any of the audio files, like it just crashed as soon as it opened. I could play all of the video files though, but the playback quality was really bad, like it was super compressed or something. And both of the app images work just fine, that's Etcher and the Pling Store thing, but there's no out of the box support for Flatpak or Snaps, and since Artix is based on Arch, none of the other formats worked either. So Artix doesn't ship with 32-bit support. KAOS was also sorta of based on Arch and didn't ship with 32-bit stuff either, so this isn't anything new. But what is new is Artix was a real pain in trying to get any games to work at all. You can enable 32-bit support by modifying the Pac-Man config and including the Arch multi-lib repo, but rather than modifying the underlying system from how the developers shipped it, I went the Flatpak route. 
but since the distro is lacking 32-bit support in general, this made things difficult for graphics since I'm running my AMD R370 here. Mango HUD simply didn't work at all, and most games just locked up or crashed. I wanted to show City Skylines, but nope, that's not going to happen. I got Firewatch to run, and the performance was pretty underwhelming, honestly. This is a native Linux game running OpenGL, but I would wager I'm getting mm, maybe 30 frames a second here, so that's not good. So Artix, huh? What a distro. Founded on the principle that System D is like an evil villain from a Batman comic or something, it winds up being the most incomplete distro that we've ever had on the show. Given that it's based on Arch Linux and strips out 32-bit stuff and replaces a core component of pretty much every Linux distro out there, Artix is obviously not for newbies. So who is Artix for? Uh, nobody. I see literally no reason to use this unless you are curious of how an Arch-like distro runs without System D. And since many core Arch packages are built with System D, you're kind of beholden to the Artix team to make sure everything works and runs good without it. Do you want to take that chance? Well, for the inquisitive Linux power user, maybe. But for everybody else, no.